Hey everybody, it's Ron Johnson and this is the Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. I got a great show for you guys today. We, we're going to talk J.J. McCarthy. We're going to talk Sam Darnold. I spent some time with those guys last week, uh, about three hours. And so I got a lot of intel about what I think about the quarterbacks after seeing them up close and personal. But the topic we must hit, Justin Jefferson, is the highest non-paid quarterback in NFL history. The not Sorry, non-quarterback. Uh, in NFL history. He is the highest non-quarterback in NFL history. Justin Jefferson just made history. He is feeling like I'm feeling. I know he has the shades on this morning. He probably has the Dave Chappelle robe on, but we're going to get into all that much more. But I also have to address RG3. RG3 said something about NFL training camp and the season and when it should start. The problem is he was a first round pick and a Heisman Trophy winner. So his take is coming from a guy that had it all. There's some guys that have a different perspective. We're going to talk about all that much more coming up next on the Ron Johnson Show, and we'll do that after this. Locked on Sports Minnesota Podcast. It's endless Minnesota Vikings talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. Now the Ron Johnson Show. On the field, in the broadcast booth, Ron Johnson is Minnesota sports. He's played with them, hung out with them, and grown up with all the big names in Minnesota sports. They're hanging out with Ron Johnson. It's the Ron Johnson Show on the Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast. And it starts now. Hey, everybody, it's Ron Johnson, and this is the Ron Johnson Show. I want everybody to know this episode is brought to you by Sirius XM Radio. Just make sure you download the Sirius XM Radio app on your phone. You can take it anywhere you want to go, in the gym, on a run, on your bike. And you can listen to, of course, the Twins Hometown Broadcast, but you can also download Locked On Sports Minnesota and subscribe to that on the XM series, on the XM Radio app, the Sirius XM app. Just search SXM in the app market also. On YouTube, people, please go to YouTube. We, we're, we're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. That's our goal uh, by, the, by the start of the football season. We're almost there. Please go to YouTube. Use your email address and just hit subscribe, and then you'll get all the updates as the summer because we have some great guests coming up this summer. I got Jonathan Gennard. Blake Cashman is going to join us again. Chris Carter is going to join us. And so we're going to have some fun this summer with a lot of these football guys as well. Ivan Pace Jr. got a chance to meet uh, last week as well. So I'm super excited about some of the guys I connected with. And of course, we are going to have myself and Sam Ekstrom. But today, today, I got a pinch hitter in for Sam Ekstrom. Sam Ekstrom is somewhere on the beach getting a tan. And I got the pinch hitter in Luke Inman. And every time like I go through my memories of Vikings, uh, <laughs> just popped up. And then, of course, there's another memory. And Luke Inman, nobody saw who it was. It was Luke Inman. Didn't know this guy. I just saw him. I met him. At training camp probably nine years ago, I think. Almost 10 years ago, actually, because this is my 10th season of uh, covering Vikings game day. And so in that time, I was at training camp talking to Stefan Diggs. He was a second-year guy. He had just come off his rookie season. And uh, he and I are chatting it up. And I'm like, man, let me record this. So I look over. Luke Luke is watching the conversation because he's probably like, man, how is this guy talking to Stefan Diggs? And so I'm like, hey, Luke, man. I was like, hey, hey, can you, can you record this for me? And so Luke grabs a phone, hits record, and myself and Stefan Diggs, very impromptu. But Diggs was, was really was some good stuff. Uh, so I enjoyed that, you know, time. And now looking at now the players, you know, I've interviewed Adam Thielen now. Mm -hmm. I sat down with Justin Jefferson. You know, so it, it's been fun to see, you know, where I started with me and Luke and now where we are. Uh, you know, Blake Cashman, Chris Carter, uh, you know, Randall McDaniel, John Randall, uh, Amara Rashad. So like getting all these guys and being able to have a one on one or just an interview on a show I've been on with those guys. It's been extremely fun. Um, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this football season, not this summer, mm -hmm. but Luke, we got it. We got to hit the top of the notes. We got to hit what everybody wants to talk about. And it's Justin Jefferson. I know Justin Jefferson right now is somewhere with this, this little tablet here now because he's he's officially back. So now he's like, coach. Load me up. Shoot me. Shoot me the info, coach. Shoot me what I need to know. And so um, I know Justin Jefferson. Here's one I want to go with one. The video he put out extremely sincere. Mm -hmm. This is a guy that could have been loud. He could have been uh, um, noisy. He could have been a distraction to the team. 
Um, he wasn't. The entire time, Justin Jefferson stood on, I want to do this the right way. And I think that's why Minnesota stood by him. That's why Minnesota never felt pressured. Uh, that's why the media never really got a, oh, Jefferson wants to be traded. He wants to be out. I love the fact that the Vikings took the calls about Justin Jefferson being traded and immediately said, heck no, we're not trading the best receiver in the NFL. And so all of it was handled properly. But when you look at Justin Jefferson, I'm wearing my Grinch t-shirt today. Not because Justin Jefferson is a Grinch, because Justin Jefferson can do whatever he wants. And as we know the story of the Grinch, his heart grew 10 sizes too big or whatever it was, or his heart was two sizes too small. That's what it was. And then it grew when you know he got love. Not to say Justin Jefferson ever was cold hearted, but when you get $110 million guaranteed, 88 point whatever at signing, you can do whatever you want. You can go get a Christmas tree and put it up right now. Um, you could you could have a birthday party on your half birthday. You can do whatever you want. And I know Luke and I are going to talk about this later in the Daily Three about what would we do if we got $88 million, million at signing. Just writing our name down. Don't have to run no routes. Don't have to do nothing. What would we do with that money? So we'll talk about that in the daily three. But but here's where I go with the Justin Jefferson deal. It's four years, 140, right? 140 million. Yep. yep. But it's, it's really 110 is what it is. 110 is the guarantee. The, the other 30 million, it's predicated on that fourth season. It's also predicated on probably a couple escalators. We'll see the we'll see the all the the the, the verbiage come out once he officially signs because he hasn't signed it yet. It's there. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Vikings are going to do a little picture of him showing up to the facility. Because if I were him, oh, I'd be on 494 so fast. Like he would I'm, media, <laughs> like I'm Jordan Addison. Media, not Jordan Addison fast though. I'm 494. I, fast, hey, but not that fast. Hey, I'm calling the cops and saying, hey, <laughs> I'm letting them I know. need a police. I'm letting them know I need a police escort because I'm trying to do a hundred to get to the facility. Get me a police escort. I'm Justin Jefferson. I'm scared. I don't want to get arrested for speeding. And I want you guys to get me there. Also, it would be nice to have some sirens as I pull up to the facility and they open the gates. And then I walk in with my team of people, my sunglasses. I'm going to sign this deal. And then. I think it's usually about 24 to 48 hours. Like back when I played, when I saw, I remember I got to Baltimore, I signed my deal, and it literally was a paper check. My signing bonus was like right around 200 something, $300,000, and it was actually a paper check. Like that's how old I was. Like we didn't have, and one, I didn't have my, I didn't even have a bank account set up yet. Like that was the thing. I didn't have, I had like a small TCF bank, I think back then. Um, nothing major in it. My Pell Grant and some other little money here and there for my mom. Uh, but I never had like a, uh, an account to wire money to. So they literally, it was an envelope <laughs> with a check from uh, uh, Mr. Bashadi and, and Mr. Modell. And I signed, boom, here you go. And then I went home and then, you know, we started OTAs and whatever and blah, blah. Cause I signed early. I was not about to hold out and try to see how much I can get. Can I get more? My agent was asking me all those questions. I'm like, look, what did the fifth and sixth round guy sign? He's like, yep. I was like, let's get this done. Like, I don't need to haggle and all that. I was I was more about playing and proving myself on the field than I was about how much more can I get out of them. I probably should have been a little bit more savvy maybe and thought about it. But at that time, I'm like, look, wh whatever I'm slated at, let's because I even asked. He's like, yeah, look, this is what you're slated at. Let's do it. So paper check, got it. Justin, about 24 hours later, probably, you know, because they're going to hit the boom, transfer the money. Bank, bank bank transfers of that size, probably 24 to 48 hours. He's got to tell his team where to put the money, different accounts. And then he'll get that little email. <laughs> boom. It's in your account. <laughs> That's one of those booms where you could throw your phone out the window because you're like, I don't care. I'm going to get another one. <laughs> like jump in the pool with your phone. Like, but 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 this is what this does for Minnesota. It now allows him to show up to OTAs and minicamp, not maybe do much. Mm -hmm. But be around the team. Yeah. He's going to be super happy to be out there now. Like he, I mean, he's going to be walking on air. Um, but now he can interact, maybe catch some balls from JJ for the media, catch some balls from Sam Darnold to kind of get acclimated to those guys. Like it, it really puts this team in a great position going into the summer and into training camp. Because imagine if we headed to training camp and this was the conversation about the contract. But when you saw that and you saw it signed, what, what was your thoughts, Luke, right away? Well, well, you mentioned at the top, Ron, this whole thing could have gotten a lot more dramatic than it was. JJ could have turned a little sour at some point. Things could have gotten a little nasty and all that. I, I'm not going to lie to you, Ron. Over the long off season 
there may have been a moment or two where at times I bought into the paranoia, maybe the rumor mill of whether this deal was ever going to get done. I mean, this has been a major talking point for us in the media, right? The local media dating all the way back to last year now at this point. So yeah, I, I may have entertained some of those trade rumors at times and wondered to myself, man, okay, a, a 25 year old superstar wide receiver in his prime. What's that worth nowadays? Three first rounders, two first rounders. That would be kind of fun to play with. Maybe Maybe you can make him play out his fifth year and then franchise tag him and, and then maybe trade him for two or three first. I don't know. But end of the day here, everybody knows you build sustainability in this league, in the NFL, through the draft nowadays. Everybody knows that. So the name of the game is just draft good players. And when you draft good players, which is already hard enough as it is, mind you, but when you finally nail one, when you finally find a good one, especially first rounder, and when it's time to pay up, you pay up. You pony up. This is what you do, Ron. So, I mean, the salary cap keeps going up and up every year. You got to spend some of this money somewhere at some point, right? And then you think about the fact they didn't bring Kirk Cousins back. Uh, they've really been clearing cap space since the moment Quasi got here back in 2022 for a move like this. So, I, I just think it was a, a, a no-brainer, a slam-dunk move right from the get-go. And I really don't think, at the end of the day, there was probably a world where, despite all the drama, all the paranoia at times, I don't don't think there was a world where they were ever going to let this guy get out of the building without a new deal by the end of this year at the latest. And again, if you're ever going to open your checkbook up and pay a guy this kind of money that isn't a quarterback, you do it for a superstar wide receiver in this new pass happy league because he, he is the definition of an X factor. He's a mismatch weapon every single time he's out on the field. And anybody who knows him, and I'm glad you touched on this. He's a good kid. He's got a great head on his shoulders, too. And now that he kind of got what was rightfully due for him, I guarantee you the only thing left on this checklist now is bringing a Super Bowl back to the state of Minnesota. So I'm excited for him. I'm excited for the team. I'm excited for this, this young core and nucleus of all these young guys they have, specifically on offense. I'm excited for KOC and Quasi. Um, you know there's a lot of pressure that just got lifted off all their shoulders. And now they can all do what they do best, Ron. Just focus on football from here on out. Yeah, and when you look at this contract, and so the one thing that threw me off too is like some people are saying he had 31 touchdowns, but everything I've looked at said he only has 30 touchdowns. Yeah. And so like I said, it was the it was the seed. I don't know if you saw this. It's the Adam Schefter tweet. It's the CD Lamb, because I, I I quote tweeted at the top of that just to basically point out his numbers because he's like, oh, CD Lamb had a great day today because of Justin Jefferson. How? It's six games less. Like Justin Jefferson missed six games compared to what CD Lamb has played, and they they have the same right. stats. So, and he has more. Like he has fifty nine hundred yards. CD Lamb has fifty two. Both great, great numbers in four years. Mm -hmm. Great numbers. Mm -hmm. But seven hundred more yards is a lot of freaking yards. That's what some guy. I I would love to have had seven hundred yards every season. Like I would have I would have salivated over seven hundred yards every season. This is something that he's separated himself in the same amount of time, 700 yards. That's almost like 200 yards a season between the – and he has six less games in him because he got hurt. Josh Dobbs threw him to the Wolves. And so when you think about that, 700 more yards and six less games. If you were to say Justin Jefferson, 66 games, C.D. Lamb, 66 games, Justin Jefferson probably has 6,400 yards. He only had 30 touchdowns. C.D. Lamb, I think, has 35. Justin probably ends up with 38 when you think about some of the games he missed and who they played and what could have happened. Um, I guarantee he would have had a big game in there, a 200 yarder in there or something, or a three touchdown game in there. The way KLC was really trying to feed him the ball. If you, if you think about where they were with the uh, catches, I think it's 392 to 395. Again, only three less catches, but six less games. He was not going to go a game with no catches. So you know he's at least getting five catches a game in those six. That's 30 catches he did not get right there. So that puts him 30 catches ahead of CeeDee Lamb if he plays those six games. So there's there's a lot to this. But when you look at the contract extension, you know, Justin Jefferson now is tied to the Vikings for five years now. He has five years. He's going to play this because because a lot of people are trying to understand, like, is this a four-year deal from now or is this mm -hmm. it's an extension? Mm -hmm. So he's still going to play this year out. He still gets his $88 million at signing. So that's five seasons. It's through the 2028 season. But I guarantee by 2028, they are not going to be on this deal. He's going to like because other guys are going to sign. So here's some names of guys um, that have big contracts that probably are going to be up and it's going to affect 
Justin Jefferson as well. You got Amara St. Brown who signed, A.J. Brown signed, Devonta Smith signed, Jalen Waddle signed, Nico Collins with Houston signs, which that's going to be interesting because they have Stefan Diggs. Right. So it feels like the Stefan Diggs is a rental and they know that the way they sign Nico Collins. And so maybe Diggs is just come in here and see if you can get us to where you got the Buffalo Bills. Can you get us to the to the uh are they NFC or AFC? I always AFC, AFC, the AFC championship. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, because they played um uh, Colts, the, Titans, the Colts, Jags, yep, yeah. and the Bengals, and yeah, because right. when the playoff they were trying to get in, right? And uh right. yep, the, all these guys are signing CD Lamb. Jamar Chase, we know Jamar Chase is going to want, I mean, because where does Jamar Chase go over here? 36? 36? 37? Yeah, I mean, T. Higgins was waiting for this deal. Like you mentioned, C.D. Lamb as well. There, there, there was a lot of guys. This is going to be a huge snowball effect, a huge domino effect now. There was a lot of guys waiting for J.J. to reset this market, but you're absolutely right. Jamar Chase is going to be the guy who likely odds on favorite to kind of trump this deal and reset the market next offseason, most likely. How do the Bengals find a way to pay Joe Burrow Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. I don't think he can do it. T. Higgins probably on the outside looking in. And this is what people keep trying to bring up because they're like, originally everybody's like, oh, his contract's only 27 and whatever million. Yeah. Um, but that's when you're doing it over the five-year period. Right. What people are forgetting, he's not going to make it to the fifth year because if you do do 140 divided by five, yes, you get to 28 million. Mm -hmm. The Vikings last year offered him allegedly 28 plus million dollars, but I guarantee the guarantee wasn't as high and maybe the years were longer like maybe it was 28 a year but it was 28 a year maybe over like six years and because that was kind of the number we kept throwing out like is it a six-year deal what do they get out of him? how much does he want he wants a shorter deal more money now i mean who cares about a long-term deal you got 89 guaranteed you got 100 or sorry you got 89 fully guaranteed you got 110 guaranteed so, because the 89 is at signing, meaning I guarantee that 110 fully guarantee or whatever, 110 guarantee yep. probably yep. goes off some other stuff too. Like you have to do this. You have to be healthy. You can't get arrested. You can't do this. And right. again, he's a good kid. So I think they're fine. The Vikings are like, yeah, let's do that. We're not worried about this. But it's sad to even say that because people think it's like tongue in cheek. It's not. When you look at Rasheed Rice, you look at a lot of these other guys in the offseason who made some dumb decisions and the team is like, Hey, look, man, we're not paying you for that. That's that's not on us. And so, you know, Nick Bosa was the league's highest paid nine QB. And now it's Justin Jefferson. Now, I will say, I guarantee Nick Bosa's agent is probably going back to him. AJ Brown's agent is probably going back to the team as well. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa what's going on? Like, hey, hey, 35, we can do that. And so the reason the 35 <laughs> comes up is if you to divide the 140 over four years, because that's what it's probably going to be more like. Mm -hmm. It's going to be through 2027. And then I guarantee whether it's 2027 or 2026, 2027 probably, but 2026, it could be. I mean, it could be a four or five after that sixth season. We could be talking about this after three seasons. Like, hey, like I got, because I mean, if you do that math, 35 times two, that's $70 million on the books for two years. Right. Two things could happen. One, JJ could be on a Randy Moss trajectory where he's headed to the HOF and one of the best receivers to ever lace him up. And they're like, mm, we got to, we got to pay him more. And the salary cap is going to go up. That's what people, because people are always like, where's, where's this going? The salary cap is going to keep going up because the TV rights keep going up. Amazon is probably going to throw a boatload of money at the NFL when they're, when they have the opportunity to, to say, Hey, we want half the season. Give us half, give us half the games where people have to have Amazon fire, which I think is B get BS. Mm -hmm. um, I don't mind it being simulcasted on, on Amazon. So where people that are, cable list and cut the cord they can still watch nfl games i think that may be the partnership and not in it what was it before the sunday ticket sunday Maybe ticket. that goes away yeah. and it becomes the amazon ticket where instead of having to go with direct tv sunday ticket to get every game you just go to amazon and you get every single game you want um there also the other thing too is the nfl app like i have the nfl app and i pay i think it's like 90 bucks 100 bucks a year mm -hmm. and i get every game i want as well so it's not like you can't do it. You can you can get the NFL app and just pay the hundred dollars a year just, you get every game. Just real quick too to add on to that, Netflix, right? Netflix is going to be airing a Christmas game here in the next two years, oh, yeah, and then also we had a Peacock game right on NBC, the NBC app last year. So you got too many apps going on, I think, for a lot of people. Ron, it would be nice if it was all condensed into one or two apps, but obviously it's never going to be condensed. The they yeah. want money, Amazon, and then Fox gets it, but then there's NBC games. There's CBS games. Mm -hmm. There's uh, there's an Amazon game because they're playing on Thursday night football. So as the money goes up, the money's going to be there for these guys to get more and more money. But the biggest key for this, again, everybody was so concerned about Kirk Cousins is going to want 
uh because what did he get from the falcons what is his yearly i don't even know is it uh, four year uh gosh what was it 180 four year 180 so that came out to about 45 per 45 ish yeah. so 45 million change. dollar contract my guess though is with his achilles it's not guaranteed because it didn't say 180 guaranteed. it was two years it's guaranteed there's a hundred there's a hundred guaranteed or hundred some guaranteed yeah and then yeah they can opt out or cut them or do something or trade them or whatever um and he has no I, well my guess is maybe he has a no trade clause in there like for specific teams but who knows mm -hmm. um maybe he got bamboozled and he signed thinking he was a long-term falcon right. and they got what they wanted which is a two-year rental so mm -hmm. that they can get their quarterback they drafted up to speed and then he can sit back and play two years after kirk cousins and again because some people are saying like oh if he's doing good we're gonna you know maybe uh uh, uh michael Penix sits for four years he's not sitting for four years mm -hmm. One to two years, he's going to sit, and then he's going to take over for Kirk Cousins, just like in the movie with Jamie Foxx. Like it's going to be <laughs> the, the Michael Penix show. Uh, and but but when you think about all this money, the reason is Justin Jefferson was able to sign. If you sign Kirk to forty, you can't sign JJ to thirty-five. So I think that was the key. You can't have a hundred forty million dollar receiver and a hundred eighty dollar quarterback. It just doesn't work. Like that's why the Chiefs moved on from Tyreek Hill. That was the big reasons why the Chiefs, because they're like, look, we're going to give Pat Mahomes $450 million, even though he backed it up. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's over 10 years. That's $45 million over 10 years. But he backed it up and said, I want, I'll want, i give some money back so we can sign Travis Kelsey, which they did. But then you think about the whole situation, the way it's set up, the way they're moving the team, the way they're moving the pieces of the puzzle, like a chessboard. The Vikings kind of did the same thing. They're like, look, we either can keep Kirk, and we probably won't be able to sign J.J., or let's go to JJ's agent, tell him, hey, we're going to get you a quarterback. And that's probably why they were super excited when they when McCarthy fell the way he fell. Because I'm pretty sure they told JJ, look, just relax. We're going to get you a quarterback. Let's get through this draft. And then we got you. And they did it. They got him a quarterback. They also got him some defensive pieces. So now if they – because think about this. If they can have a top five to ten defense, top five to ten, they don't have to be top, top one, two, five to ten. They can't be 30. But top five to ten in that five to ten range, and they can be on the plus turnover battle. Sorry, minus minus turnover battle. Mm -hmm. They can win mm -hmm. like minus. Not, and I'm not saying go ridiculous like some of these teams have done in the past, like some of the Mike Zimmer teams have done. Mm -hmm. Just go like minus five. Mm -hmm. Be like minus six. Mm -hmm. Don't be plus anything. They had, I think, at one point we counted it was like thirty five turnovers. It was ridiculous offensively. So when, when you when you look at that, the way it's set up for them, if this team can be not turnover prone, hold on to the ball. And we're going to talk about this because this is the next segment. We're going to talk about this because Sam Darnold and J.J. McCarthy are going to be a big reason for this. And also some of the other players I saw because I hung out with them at the C.J. Ham uh, softball tournament. We'll have some pictures pop up in the show later in, 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 in a video. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was fun to be out there. With those guys but i i got a different perspective and i'm a little biased now just hanging out with him for three hours you get a different conversation you get a different perspective you, you really because jj mccarthy played with my cousin at michigan mccarthy pay so he and i chopped it up a little bit about mccarthy and about michigan football and about this and about img and like we were talking about everything because i mean i don't know if you ever been to a baseball softball game people there's not a lot to do if you're not on the field so there was a lot of time for us to talk. Uh, shout out to Brian O'Neill. Brian O'Neill was playing catch with my daughter, like just mm. having fun, throwing a softball back and forth. So, and, and I didn't ask him to. Like I turned around, I'm looking for her. She's over by the dugout, throw playing catch with Brian O'Neill. So you know, and it's funny. Like I, I literally, I, and I forgot to have this conversation with my wife about this. Like I remember that. Like I remember being that kid around seven or eight. Being able to throw the ball with Mel Blunt, being able to throw the ball wow. with Lynn Swan, wow. uh, being able to chat with Lynn Swan when I was at Minnesota, we went to play Michigan, and Lynn Swan was the ABC sideline reporter. So I like I, I I have those memories now. When I was a kid, I didn't care about all that. Mel Blunt, yeah. Michael Harris, Mean Joe Green. <laughs> it's like you know, that's just that's just Mean Joe Green. Like what, what is this? This is what is Donnie Shell doing over here? Like, but no, now man. I'm like, man. Like mm -hmm. that's that's Tony Dungy. That's mm -hmm. that's that's you know, and so like I, my daughter now later, she'll be able to look at those. She's nine, she doesn't even I mean she likes football, but she's not like a super fan. Mm -hmm. But she'll be able to look back one day. And she's but she did tell me she's like, Dad, you gotta print those pictures out so I can frame them and put them in my room. That's so at cool. least she knows there's somebody, but I am gonna print them and then I'm gonna try to get them signed. That's yes. my goal is to yes. say, Hey, 
you guys, I appreciate because I'm gonna be out there at mini camp, probably or training camp, mm-hmm. and uh, that's my goal is to get those, get Sam Darnold and uh, JJ McCarthy to assign uh, those for my daughter before I frame them. Mm-hmm. Uh, my my twelve, my thirteen year old is not happy because she decided to go with her friends and didn't come with us. Ooh, and she missed out. Yep, she went with her friends and wanted to hang out with her friends, and so I took the me and the nine year old by herself. My wife had track, so it was just me and me and my nine year old, which I I have fun. I'm I'm gonna try to do that more. Take each kid by themselves and not like always together. But yeah, her and I played catch on the field, blah blah, and all the friends. But we'll talk about that and what I saw from these two quarterbacks because the future is bright, and I wasn't sure until I saw this on the field. But we'll talk about all that much more after a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Ron. Quick reminder, today's episode brought to us by FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook and official sportsbook partner of the MLB. Right now, playoff time in the NBA and NHL, not to mention baseball's in full swing. That means FanDuel is your number one place to be to bet on all the action. Check this out right now. New customers, you're getting 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks on any winning $5 bet. Right now, Boston Celtics, they're six and a half point favorites in game one over the Dallas Mavericks. You can get the Mavericks at plus 190 to win tonight straight up. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on the app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. So, what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make your first bet a huge win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book and official sports book partner of the MLB. So we got to talk about this. So CJ Ham had a, a, an event, great event. Um, his, his team of people reached out to me through Gabe Henderson said, hey, um, can you MC this? And I was like, what night is it? Because my kids you got sports and my other, you know, like we're, we're in the thick of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, they told me the day. So I'm like, hmm. And I, and, I, and I debated on should my daughter go to practice or can she skip practice? And, you know, this will be an experience for her. So I was like, yep, let's skip. I mean, she's she's playing eight. You like mm-hmm. she's really she's the best player on the team statistically. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's the one of the best catchers, throwers, hitters. Um Probably for her age, I'm, I honestly, for her division and age group, she pounds the ball. Um, she's good enough. She played 10 this spring. But anyway, mm. when you when you think about her, and I'm like, all right, let's go. So I'm like, this is gonna be a great experience for her. So we get to she gets to pitch on the field a little bit. We're throwing and catching. Uh, and then the players show up. So then she's in the, you know, I'm introducing her to, to Sam Darnold, JJ McCarthy, Brian O'Neill, because she already knew CJ, but, you know, she went over and, and hung out with CJ and his wife and kids for a little bit. Gabe Henderson's wife and his daughter showed up. Or Gabe Henderson's wife. Sorry, Gabe was already there. <laughs> um, and so then, like, as I'm starting to play through the night, like, she she gets to take a picture with Sam Darnold. Then she gets to take a picture with JJ McCarthy. I'm like, these are the starting quarterbacks for the Minnesota Vikings. It's not, like, <laughs> just normal stuff. Uh, then I look over and she's playing catch with the starting right tackle. Uh, Brian O'Neill, he's just tossing the ball to her. She's yeah. tossing it back. They're just having fun. Um, and then she's like, Dad, can I get autographs? And I'm like, Well, like, I'm here working. I don't want to, you know, but I was like, right. Hey, I was like, if you if you get a softball, go over and see if the guys will sign it. So she gets a ball all of a sudden, you know, like, and now it, and it's in the front of our house now. She put it like on the mantle <laughs> in the front of the house. First but thing, was, walk but in, it, but it's a, it's a softball signed by JJ, Sam, Brian O'Neill, uh, Aaron. Uh, uh, the new running back, Aaron. Uh, oh, Aaron Jones. Yeah, Aaron yeah. Jones. That's magical when you're a kid. That um, age, that's Ivan magical. Pace Jr. Yeah. Um, all the guys. I so CJ Ham, of course. Um, forgot who else was over there. Harrison Smith. I'm trying mm-hmm. to think of all the guys, but it was a lot. And you'll see the video, people. If you're if you're watching on YouTube, mm-hmm. uh, or on one of the apps, you got Amazon Fire, you got Roku, you got the Peacock, or, or sorry, not Peacock. Sorry, Amazon Fire, Roku. Uh, you can download Locked On Sports Minnesota, and you can watch the video of this. But just go to YouTube. Go to YouTube. Subscribe. Uh, find the Ron Johnson show and uh, or find sorry, locked on sports, and then you'll find the Ron Johnson show within that. And then you can see the video, we'll have the pictures up. But you know, she had to take pictures with these guys, and then the video, you know, like I'm on the field with the microphone the entire game, hyping the guys up. Uh, we're having fun, I'm interviewing the guys mid game. Uh, you know, uh, I forgot who was pitching, I think Brian O'Neill was pitching at one point, then they switched pitchers, and he was pissed off because he's like, Look, I, I gave up one run, and then we bring in, I forgot who came in and pitched for him instead, second. And that dude gave up like eight. The defense ended up going up like nine to nothing. Mm. Um, and and there was a lot of errors too. Like I think Jalen Naylor dropped two fly balls, but Theo Jackson 
And I think Booth Jr. Oh my goodness. Booth Jr. was like, it was either him or Theo Jackson. I can't remember. Well, one of them reminded me of like Wesley Snipes in uh major, major league. league oh yeah <laughs> oh no fast okay. running wow. jumping. like he jumped one of them jumped like spider-man like his feet came up in the air he jumped he was above the gate like <sighs> the fence in the outfield and reached up and caught and robbed two home runs like literally wow Jalen Naylor on the other hand receiver you would think he'd be able to do it he goes to the fence catches it and drops it on the other side of the oh, fence. Oh no! Receiver so, slash punt returner, mind you. So Come on, error. Be able to, yeah, error on the outfielder and gave up a home run. Oh no! Not once, twice. Oh no! Twice he did it where he caught it and then dropped it over the fence. Like this is this back. this CJ Ham charity softball game. This is the event formerly known as the Adam Thielen charity softball right. event. So it's it still kind of goes by like CJ Thielen Foundation, yeah. but okay, it's hosted yep. now by CJ Ham, and the Got money it. went to the fam the Ham family uh, scholarship fund. Because that's yeah. always a huge event and big game yeah. every year. So, so you know what's funny though? This going. year it was still big. It was still fun. Love, but it was overshadowed a little bit by fans because that was the same night of Game Five. Oh, I see. And so that was the big, yeah. and we didn't even get to talk about because, like, if they were winning, if the Timberwolves were winning, we were going to announce like the Timberwolves score during yeah. the game. Yeah. By the by, the end of the first quarter, it was thirty five to nineteen. Toast. I'm like, yeah, Forget. we're not going to ruin this event with like <laughs> telling people what the Timberwolves are doing, and then they're you know then they're pissed off all day. Mm -hmm. But this is what I'll say, man. Like after watching JJ McCarthy at shortstop, Sam Darnold at third base, both of those guys are athletic as heck. Like they like Sam Darnold for sure is way more athletic than I thought he was going to be. I'm talking about like backhand, throwing it across the diamond, throwing guys out. Brian O'Neill was the biggest first baseman I'd ever seen. JJ McCarthy going in the hole, rotating, flipping his hips. I thought it was A-Rod for a minute, like or Derek Jeter. Um, like it was Derek Jeter and A-Rod out there with those two at third and short. But then even when they hit the ball, like running, like Sam Darnold running through, like to to be safe. I mean, fool, him and JJ are fat, like they're fast. They're not slow, they're not super fast. But they're not slow. Like they are fast. Like they have good speed. And so I say that to say a lot of times you can watch a guy play another sport and kind of get a feel for what he might be on the field. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and watching those two guys, especially JJ McCarthy, on the baseball field, it, it had some athleticism to it. Like, like Aaron Jones, he's 100 percent running back. He's not a softball player, he's not athletic. He was striking out. Like they have like nine strikeouts in slow pitch softball. I'm like, that I've blows never, my mind. I, I get it. Mind. Different sport, different athletes, right? Different strengths, weaknesses. Yeah. But but for, for some of these athletes, right, that we put on this pedestal, right? Right, running the four three forty, right, the thirty eight inch vert to be a, striking out in slow pitch softball blows my mind. Not that yeah. I'm a Hall of Famer or any good either, but uh, it's just funny. It's just kind but of one funny. of the videos. I mean, the video probably will put it up. Uh, but but one of the videos is um Harrison Phillips doing the gritty. As he scores down third, you know, coming down third baseline, uh, they told I forgot who bet him. Oh, it was Ivan Pace. Him and Ivan Pace were joking, like, "Man, if you if you hit a home run, man, you got to do the gritty." So he hits a home run, and then that's why in the video you see Cam Bynum like laughing because he's like, "Does this dude really just try to hit the gritty?" Now I'm gonna say his gritty wasn't bad. It was better than Kirk oh, Cousins. Like his okay. gritty wasn't bad. It was better than Jacecki for sure. Like it actually which is like a low bar, by the way. That's a low looked bar. like yeah. like Scooby Doo and Shaggy. <laughs> he like, did zoinks, yeah. zoinks. Yeah. Like it just looked horrible. Yeah. Um, not but good. I will say this: like seeing Sam Darnold, I am not afraid to say he can be and should be week one. Now again, I know people are like, "Oh, that's preposterous!" Like he's <laughs> he's only done you know one thing. Da, 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 like yeah, it's not that. It's the throwing motion. It's the running after the ball. It's the getting the ball, running across, throwing it. It's running people down in the rundown. It's You could just see his fluid body movements. He's not a stiff quarterback. And I think sometimes that's that's what we get when we think about it. It's like, oh, these guys are stiff or this guy's super right. stiff. He's not that. And so I truly can see him being the quarterback for at least half the season until they feel like J.J. McCarthy is ready, if not the whole season, just because they have Justin Jefferson under contract for five years. Why rush it? Mm-hmm. Why get a quarterback in and ruin it when you're going to throw him and, and and possibly screw him up like RG3? Um, where not say and RG3 got hurt. Like, let's let me, let me be honest with that. But you threw RG3 to the wolves, where maybe some of the, the hurt or some of the play call or something could have been different if he had had a year to learn. Um, Andrew Luck, probably why he retired early. Not to say it was just that, but it's just understanding parts of the game that maybe you don't know. Um, you know, Herbert. Uh, Lawrence, 
a lot of these guys that first year struggle. Peyton Manning. Yeah. Peyton Manning struggled. So I'm not saying struggling is the end all be all, but it has screwed up. Like when we look at Mac Jones and some of these other quarterbacks, mm -hmm. they got like they got crucified. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you suck. Uh Zach Wilson. Mm -hmm. You know, like so for the for every Peyton Manning and 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 Justin Herbert and Trevor Lawrence, there's also the Zach Wilsons. Mm -hmm. that some people aren't ready. And so that's what we don't know. Is J.J. McCarthy a Peyton Manning where he can step in? Like Jordan Love, benefit it. Patrick Mahomes, benefit it. Like Aaron Rodgers, benefit it. I, I would say there's more benefit to wait than there is to play him early. Why? Like you have your guy under contract. Mm -hmm. You now have to then go sign Christian Derisaw. Even if it's just one year to let him see the NFL, see the speed of the game, see the cause in the headset, see Sam Darnold, like operate then you're putting them out there next year with a solid foundation of guys and now you have i mean i don't know how many draft picks they're gonna have because they they right. gave a lot away right but i'm pretty sure they're gonna leverage like 2026 20, and 27 maybe to move up into the second third round of the 2025 uh, draft so mm -hmm. but you're gonna have all that you're gonna have those pieces in place and then you'll have a jj mccarthy who's been around and acclimated for a while but he has grown up with hardball so he did learn that but brady benefited big yeah. time like yeah. could you imagine tom brady being the brock Pur like brock purdy got to sit he wasn't thrown in right away mm -hmm. but could you imagine tom brady right away i don't think we have what we have i agree i totally agree and, and to your point too ron it's not like these guys are just holding a clipboard the whole time you're still going out there practicing every single day maybe it's not with the starters but you're with the second team okay i mean there's still a lot to be absorbed there's so many nuances and variables to the nfl game that i agree with you throwing a guy into the fire too soon especially at such an important position like quarterback can do you more harm than good sometimes and i'm glad we have this bridge quote unquote with sam darnold real quick i just pulled up a scout report coming out of college just real quick you're mm -hmm. talking about his athleticism right his grandfather was a basketball player at usc and an olympic volleyball player his dad played quarterback at usc and most importantly he himself sam darnold a three-sport all-american athlete in high school including being a stud baseball player so hearing mm -hmm. him ripping it up looking like cal ripkin out on the diamond doesn't really surprise me one bit and and, and to your point here ron between him and jj mccarthy and we all love what Kirk Cousins brought to the table the last few years, but he was a statue in the pocket, right? Back there, 99 out of 100 dropbacks. I'm excited. I'm low-key pumped to finally have some athleticism at quarterback and not have not just one, but two guys be able to move around, kind of create with their legs once in a while, turn nothing into something with some of these improv skills for the first time in a long time because we have not had that on this team. And what feels like ages, feels like you got to go back to Tavares Jackson or even Dante Culpepper for that matter. For sure, for sure, yeah. And so that's that's the big key to this. I, I do want to address some RG3 said. So in the Daily 3, yeah. um, <clears throat> we're, we're going to have a little bit of an audible. In the Daily 3 coming up, we're going to talk about – what we would do with the money. We're also going to talk about what impresses the most about JJ, uh, JJ's four-year career. We're also going to, in the middle of that, also kind of do a storyline. But I do want to address RG3 before we get out of the show. And we'll do that right after this break. And now it's time for the Daily Three. That's three questions. It's been about a minute each today. Take it away, Luke. Okay, first one up here, Ron, Daily 3. Kwesi said he wanted JJ to be able to celebrate this, this new signing, this new extension, like a friend celebrates a birthday month. So if you were Justin Jefferson, a 25-year-old NFL phenom, you just signed a new contract, it gave you $89 million guaranteed, what are you doing to celebrate contract month? And what's the first few things you're buying or doing? Uh, I'm honestly, I mean, Justin Jefferson, we are, he's been in the NFL for a while now. So four years into this, he's got money. He's got a house. He's got, so uh, I mean, unless he wants a bigger house, uh, you know, I don't know if he wants it in Minnesota or maybe his hometown where he's going to be long term because we know a lot of guys pick a spot like Arizona, Texas, Louisiana, Florida, wherever they're going to be. Uh, so I'm pretty sure he's going to get his forever home. Uh, and again, we know a lot of guys, John Randall, a lot of they, they've stayed in Minnesota forever. So in Minnesota is a great place to live. I don't know if that's for JJ, but who knows? Um, but if it is, <clears throat> maybe he gets his forever home on, on one of these golf courses or lakes. If not, he's going to go to where he's getting it. But if it was me, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to get a boat. We're going to go out on Lake Minnetonka uh, and we're going to celebrate. You know, I'm not going to go too crazy with it. But I also know there's a lot of people that would just give me stuff anyway. I don't have to pay for it. So if I'm him, I'm reaching out to, you know, one of the local 
boat houses that uh that's out there on the lake one of the bars out there and i'm i'm doing it i'm we're, we're gonna have a boat party in the lake and i'm telling everybody to come out you know the big island and we're gonna we're gonna have the dj a, bo a dj boat which is a, a dj on our boat uh because he can probably get dj ski he can get <laughs> uh one of these other dudes to, to be the d oh he for sure can get ski oh yeah on his yacht and then he's gonna do it up and you know like you'll have chris humphreys pull up you'll have probably some baseball players pull up but yeah that's what i would do i would i would go on lake minnetonka and i would just celebrate it uh nice and clear no i'm not driving a car anywhere because if i'm drinking or hanging out like I'm, right. I'm making it as safe as possible i'm gonna you know whether i need to get a hotel by minnetonka somewhere so right we got the lake we're going right to the hotel we're not worried about driving nowhere um or we're having cars pick us up whatever but everything is going to be done and i'm going to make sure all my people are taken care of too like i'm gonna make sure everybody gets there who wants to be here blah blah and other than that like i you know get my mom a car in a house which he might have already done uh because i know we saw michael pittman just do that for his parents he got both his parents cars um when he signed his deal so i'm pretty sure something like that that's what i would do though did you ever see that movie in the 80s called brewster's millions when he had oh, yeah. to try to, had to spend a million dollars mil yeah even Where, if jj 30? tried his hardest right this first week he couldn't spend even a fraction of the 90 million guarantee. And brewster's millions was like uh you you had to spend it but you couldn't show any assets but you couldn't it. show any assets yeah you yeah. buy a car and hold on to the car right you had to spend it so a little bit uh you know more difficult than what it sounds like but i'm with you man i, I travel the world he, a little i bit. would i would reach out to everybody on twitter and say hey who wants to come to paris that's true and that's you true. get you just buy as many plane tickets to paris as you can yeah and it's spent like i would easily spin that we're I, going I, first I, class we're I'm, I'm chartering flights i'm getting a bunch of like hey meet us at the ep airport or whatever msp i'm renting out a bunch of planes we're going to paris i'm paying for everybody's hotel and Boom, money spent, done. Boom. I money. feel like, hey, Brewster's Millions, great movie. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. But there was some loopholes he just didn't think about. I, I, feel I know. Like. I got to watch that movie back and remember that. Great but yeah, movie. Because I, 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 I've said with Trading Places, like I like that. But yeah, both, you both of them. The great movie. One? All right, number two, what feat or record impresses you the most when you look at Justin Jefferson's first four seasons? Year one, broke the 18-year-old rookie record for receiving yards. Year two, became the only player in NFL history to post 3,000 receiving yards in his first two years. Year three, finished the regular season leading the NFL in receptions and receiving yards, set franchise records in both, by the way. And year four, broke wide receiver Michael Thomas's NFL record for most receiving yards by a player in his first four seasons. Or maybe there's a fifth option out there I didn't rip off. Uh, but what impresses you the most about Justin Jefferson's first few seasons? Uh, I mean, I, I like all those. The one for me is is more of like your peers. Yep. So the fact that, you know, he wasn't, because he says that in his video, he wasn't drafted the number one receiver. So he wasn't expected to be the number one receiver. He was overlooked. Um, a lot of teams, even the Eagles, I know they're probably kicking themselves right now. Um, the Eagles passed passed him up. Imagine the Eagles like Can drafting Justin Jefferson and then they go get AJ Brown. I can't, it, it doesn't, I can't even fathom it. Doesn't just doesn't make sense. But you know what though? Because then they drafted Devontae Smith, though. If they had gotten Justin Jefferson, they might not have been in that same draft spot. Yeah. To get they Devonta might not Smith. have went and got AJ Brown. And they probably wouldn't have gotten AJ yeah. Brown. Yeah. Like, well, they might have because they wouldn't Maybe. have got Devontae Smith, they would have just had Justin Jefferson. Yeah, and then they would have known like we got our guy. It'd and be then two maybe of the they three. Go, yeah, maybe way. they still go get AJ Brown to get over the hump. But Justin maybe. Jefferson with uh, what's his name, the quarterback, Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts. Are you kidding oh me? my goodness. Yes. Yeah, um, but yeah, no. I, mine for me is him having more yards in four seasons than than Randy Moss. Like yeah. that. That's crazy. Because when you think about what Moss did, it, like he created a verb off of his name. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's that one. I don't know. What about yours? It, yeah, I think so too, man. Uh, longevity. Anybody, it seems like in this league can do it for a year or two, but the longevity, 17 games now, maybe we'll talk about it, maybe 18 games here soon. The longevity, doing this three, four, hopefully five years in a row, that's what impresses me the most. So when he broke Michael Thomas's NFL record for most receiving yards by a player in his first four seasons, that one does it for me, I think. That that one's got to be at the top. Omaha, Omaha. <laughs> Calling the audible here. We're going to skip the third question. RG3 says that they should skip training camp or sorry skip otas and mini camp mm -hmm. and so because your question was about mini camp so i wanted to change this up for you really quick yep. he said they should skip otas and mini camp he said don't because they were they were debating on moving uh camp up to june to like have but he's like don't do that because the divorce rate's going to go up because players are looking forward to that june <laughs> right. that's six weeks from mini camp to right. training camp and i'm like great. they are but then he said do away with all of that OTAs and mini camp and do away with the preseason and just come back in mid July, not end of July, come back in mid July 
And so now the players have like basically all of May, June off and middle of July. And then they come back in middle of July. So they still get, instead of six, they get 10 weeks. And then they have six to seven weeks of camp. And then they play their first game. RG3, I totally understand what you're trying to go with this. I understand your thoughts around this. I understand where you're, what you're thinking. But here's, here's the problem with this. I don't think you need to do away with preseason. I think there needs to be at least one or two. Or I, 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 if you do away with preseason, you have to have joint practices, like two joint practices to where you can scrimmage and the coaches can have it in their own controlled environment. Because one, you want to be able to have that film. To, and that's the film maybe that gets sent to other teams because when those guys get cut, other teams need to be able to see how did this guy perform in the game situation. You can have refs come in. Owners want to sell that and make money, so you can still sell that to the fans to say the joint practices are open to the public and then the joint scrimmage or game or whatever, we're going to do a true scrimmage game type at the stadium, is going to be a paid situation, and here's the cost, 20 bucks, whatever, so now they can sell it out. Um, more access to the players after the scrimmage game where you can get autographed. I don't know. But I'm like, you still have to get some type of – like maybe two – joint so four six weeks i get it but mm -hmm. two joint practices mm -hmm. and you have to because then coaches can then see their players go one-on-one -on -one against another team and not just right. their guys right um you can get some tackling drills in with other players your your offensive line and defensive line get to beat up on somebody else and not their own guys anymore mm -hmm. i think that has to be done but rg3 was a first round pick if not, i'm not mistaken like one or two overall like two second overall, overall right behind Andrew Heisman Luck. trophy winner yep. that, and a quarterback that's easy for a quarterback to say that was the top pick because you're going to make a team right you, you have no but for a guy like I was a fourth round pick, so I was a little bit higher on the totem pole, but it was still marginal. Like I needed those preseason games to show the coaches I deserve to be here. I deserve to be the third receiver on this team. I can handle the speed of the NFL. I can catch balls in the game and I'm not scared. Um, that's that's where I think we, we, we can't do away with preseason because college, he said college does it. Yeah, college does it. But they play like like you know, Southwest Texas state, Southern right. of, of, of New Mexico, you know, and that's their first game for some of these power five schools. And so they, they get some introductory game before they have to go play Georgia and Texas and, mm -hmm. and Ohio state, and Michigan. The NFL doesn't do that. Like, like there's no way for the NFL to have those mm -hmm. early games that are easy. You go right into playing your rival Vikings, uh, uh, Packers game one sometimes. Right. Right. So right. when you think about that, I totally agree. I understand where he's going with it. Don't move training camp up earlier, but I do think you can do away with maybe some of the OTAs because part of the OTAs too, though, is for the receivers and guys to learn their routes. I still think there needs to be something of like captain's practice, if you want to call it or whatever, mm -hmm. but they still have to be able to learn the offense. I get in six weeks, they should be able to get it done, but usually training camp, you're not teaching. You're gearing up for like they already learned the playbook. They're coming back now and we're doing it full speed and we're, we're getting ready for the season. I just don't know if six to seven weeks is enough um of just getting the playbook then and going and being able to walk through so i, I understand where he's going with it. i do i do like the idea but that works for first round picks second round right. picks, even third round pick. it doesn't work for the free agents because you're not like ivan pace without preseason doesn't make the vikings mm. you know we mm. saw him in preseason like this dude's good mm. you know brevin span for it he did get some money from the cowboys but i'm pretty sure preseason is going to be a big deal oh, to yeah. see if he should be one of the tight ends on the cowboys so but we'll talk about that much more on the football party, I'm pretty sure, and yep. Friday on the roundtable. But I'm Ron Johnson. That was Luke Emman joining us today. And this has been the Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. And thank you guys. Make sure you subscribe again on YouTube. Please go to YouTube. If you want to see the pictures and the videos we talked about from the CJ Ham event, please download YouTube and go back and watch the video. I want to thank you guys. Have a great week.